Hi, I'm Jamie Wyver from the Notes on Nature team. And this week, I'm joined by Charlotte Ambrose from our Wildlife Inquiries team to look at some of the questions that you ask us at this time of year. And right now in October, we do get very similar questions, don't we, Charlotte, each year? We do indeed. Yeah, without fail. <laughs> so a very popular one for October. And one I think we've been having for probably towards the end of summer, right up through October, is where have all my garden birds gone? Because we do worry, don't we, that our gardens have been completely deserted and that we're going to face this sort of winter with no birds coming in at all. Um, do you get that question a lot um, at this time of year? Or what, what's the answer? Yeah, so definitely. So it's a bit of a mixture. So after obviously the breeding season, all the youngsters are starting to fledge themselves, becoming more independent. Um, you do you we just end up having a lot less birds and with the natural foods available to them at this time of year, like you'll see blackbirds on the blackberries, a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> um, so yeah, that time of year, natural abundance of food, that is probably the biggest reason. They don't need uh, the sort of supplementary foods we provide them with. Um, and additionally, on top of that, they'll be going through their molt. So the juveniles going through their first molt. Um, so you'll see lots of scruffy looking birds this time of year. And it just, it takes a lot of energy to make themselves look beautiful again. So they hide away and then they'll come back again once they want the food in our gardens. So when that temperature drops, they will, they will be back, won't they? And, and we, they we can will. get ready, can't we? We can prepare. Yeah, exactly. Always provide like a little amount still, but just making sure you update and keep it clean. Um, no old food, but they will keep popping by, especially if there's a colder spell or poorer weather. So like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they will be back. Um, <laughs> so please do not worry. Your birds will return to your garden. Um, it might seem a bit quiet at the moment. Obviously, bird song stopped as well. That's the other thing. It's quiet because yeah. they're not singing. So um, they will return. What's the um, next kind of big question that you get in October? So one of the big ones that still comes through at the moment um, is window pecking. And that changes throughout the year of what they're doing it and why they're doing it. Um, so during summer, it's a lot of territorial behaviour, seeing their own reflections. But this time of year, um, it will be to do with lots of other things. So um, blue tits in particular will be looking for little invertebrates in the window frames, especially if they're older wooden ones. Um, and then you also have what we call putty pecking, where they're pecking the putty, putty along. Pecking. <laughs> putty that's pecking. Putty pecking. I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, so that's where they're after the linseed. And it could be, they think it could be linked to things missing in their diet. But tits in particular have a real fondness for it. And they'll really go for the putty. Um, so, yeah, if you've got birds pecking on your windows, it's probably most likely to do with one of those two things. Or, and I've, I've heard people say this as well, it's because they haven't put the food out in the garden. They're coming to tell you. <laughs> the <birth laughs> yeah, that too. They're getting so hungry, they're eating your windows. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question that we often get is um, things like blue tits. So, so people ask, um, I've had a blue tit who started using my nest box right now. And th th this is a bit weird. Is this a late brood? Are they going in there because it's warmer? What, what kind of things are happening here? Yeah, so what will happen is normally after the breeding season's finished, you normally would, especially if you've got a nest box camera, you turn it off and then you forget about it. And there's a few people that contact us that will turn it back on just to check. And lo and behold, there'll be a bird inside the nest box. Um, get really excited, think it's a late brood, but it is most likely due to the sort of species that would use those nest boxes. Um, it is going to be that they're roosting overnight. I like to call it B&B. &B. So they either on a colder night take shelter in the nest box and then on a warmer night they don't bother. Um, and also they'll be looking for insects and tapping on the nest box itself, looking for bits and bobs. Or it could be, especially blue tits, really, really picky with their nest boxes. They can start as early as autumn looking for the next year's nest box. So they're just testing it out. But normally it's just an a place to rest their head for the night oh so there is a famous story isn't there that um we had uh, there's a record i think of something like 63 wrens cramming into yeah. a nest box on a frosty night so yeah all in one nest some... box <laughs> yeah i mean how extraordinary long tailed tits do it as well but i don't think they go do they go into boxes to do that um, I've not heard of long-tailed tits doing in boxes. It's really strange because blue tits, which is normally the one we get through, they actually don't like roasting with others. So, yeah, you'll normally find it's just one 
maybe yeah. two at a push. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and hopefully, uh, I suppose for them, they'll, they'll, they'll be thinking we can hang on to this for, for next year when breeding season starts. It's a good way to test it out, yeah. <laughs> Um, so talking nest boxes, uh, another question I know that you get this time of year is, should I clean my nest boxes? What, what do you suggest people do? Yeah, definitely. Best time to clean out your nest box is autumn. So it's where they're finished. Um, the best way to do it is to take out the leftover nests. Um, if there are, are any eggs left in there, though, please do dispose of them. You cannot keep the eggs. Um, yeah, empty it out. I would pre-warn you, though, when you go to empty it, make sure you stand back with gloves on. <laughs> um, just open it up gently just in case it's full of some parasites and some flies and things like that um, best way to clean it out take out everything in there then rinse it through with boiling water and allow to dry naturally um, on a nice sunny day and then put it back up don't put it back up wet um, and you can also put things like sawdust in there make it a bit cozier over winter um, the blue tits or the house sparrows or whatever you use it the next year you'll tend to find that they will take out that that material that doesn't mean it's bad it's just they put their own stamp on it and making their own nest and the material that you clear out you could put into your compost heap perhaps yeah definitely yeah um double check for nasties first but yeah if it seems okay why not yeah i know that another thing that you get asked a lot about this time of year is things that go bump in the night weird noises coming from the loft are these birds that are still nesting roosting what's going on there yeah, so it's most likely the same thing with the blue tit in the nest box, just somewhere to shelter overnight. Uh, starlings in particular will use the same place they nested in to roost in over winter sometimes. They also like reed beds and under bridges, but they sometimes will stick to the same place they know. Um, so it's most likely that, quite common. And when they are finished, they will, do, they will leave. So absolutely fine. As long as you don't mind the noise, allow them to stay. So it sounds like... Although um, the gardens have been a bit quiet for the last couple of months, birds are starting to come back and they're finding different ways that they can live alongside us, whether it's roosting in nest boxes or roof space or slowly coming back to the feeders. We can expect to start welcoming these feathered visitors back into and around our homes, perhaps not into our homes, <laughs> preferably not, but around our homes as the temperature plummets. And what would you recommend? This is my final question. What would you recommend that people do? What's the first thing they should do to prepare their garden for this, the arrival of these visitors? So make the most of your garden. Make sure you've got bird feeders, window feeders, a pond or some sort of water source, a bird bath. Make it as, as inviting as possible. Um, and if you can put things in the centre of your garden, because you've got to remember birds don't have the best sense of smell, so they really rely on sight. So when they're flying over, if they can see that lovely bird bath or feeder in the middle of the garden, that's so much easier for them to see. So making it easy, basically. Thank you very much, Charlotte. And you can find out lots more information about how to be the perfect host for wildlife um, around your home, in your garden, in your local green space on our website. Just look for Giving Nature a Home and we've got loads of ideas for you to try out. Thank you for watching.